Welcome to Chopstick Travel. I'm Luke Martin and today I'm in Antalya, Turkey. I am so pumped to be back here in Turkey and Antalya is the city of the south. I'm going to be exploring the old town and taking you for some Antalyan specialties. This city is a famous tourist destination but there's also some really authentic Turkish food. It's going to be a great episode so make sure you stay tuned until the end. Let's go eat some Turkish food. Right here behind me is Hadrian's Gate. It's a symbol of Antalya and it was built to commemorate the Roman Emperor Hadrian's visit to the city in the year 130. And you can see right in the middle here, these two grooves that go along the pavement. This is the original Roman pavement and those grooves are from countless push carts being brought in and out of the city for uh, thousands of years. So this is a symbol of Antalya and it marks the entrance to the old city which we'll be exploring a little bit later but I'm gonna go grab some breakfast first. For breakfast, we've come to a legendary restaurant here in Antalya called Boreksi Tevfik, and they're making Antalyan style soupne borek, which is a thin bread, almost like a mardabaki, thins it out very, very paper thin uh, with that. Uh, special movement with which they call serpme in Turkish. And then you can get it with cheese or you can get it with meat. And uh, what's different about this one is it's actually baked in the oven, it's not fried. So he folds it all up, shoves it in the oven and then it comes out uh, crispy brown. Smells incredible in here. And I think I'm gonna try both the cheese and the meat. This restaurant has such a cool vibe. It's really hidden, tucked in this back alley, and it's been around since 1930. And Mr. Tavik is a one man show. He's making them all to order, they're all freshly made. And I've got uh, both the different types that he's offering on his menu, which is only two different things on his menu and chai. So the first is the meat. It looks like there's a little bit of parsley in there. And as I mentioned, this is baked borax, so it's got this beautiful, crispy outside. You can see, I think it's beef with parsley, maybe some onions in there. And then over here, we've got this beautiful white cheese on the inside. You can see that looks incredible and so thin and crispy. I gotta try this cheese one first. It's very, very simple. It's all about the texture of that really thin, crispy dough. The cheese has just got a slight saltiness, but it's actually not a strong cheese. I'm actually surprised at how mild flavor that is. It's really light. Let me try the, the meat one next. I think there's gonna be a little bit more flavor going on here with the onions. Let's try that. Actually, they go really well together, but I have to give it up for the meat one. You can taste lots of onions in there. A fresh parsley, nice juicy meat in there. Really old school style uh, borek, and I love the atmosphere here. Been around since 1930, so they're obviously doing something right. Here's an idea for you. Go for a little meat piece <laughs> and top it on one of these cheese ones. I think that's gonna go really well together. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I noticed this uh, powdered sugar on the table, which I thought was pretty interesting. So I asked the waiter and he told me you can put it on this cheese one just cause it's so light in flavor. So I'll put a little bit on there or maybe a lot. And I think that's gonna make it taste really good actually. 
sweet and savory. Thank you so much. It goes perfectly with the char. Mm. Ooh, that's hot. I gotta give it up for the meat one too. The cheese one's a little bit plain, but with the sugar, it definitely adds another level. And uh, the price about 100 for the two Borek and two Chai. So it is a little bit kind of pricey, but if you think about it, he's doing it all by himself. So I think it's totally worth the price. And that was just an appetizer today. So I'm gonna keep going and eat some more Italian specialties. If there is one dish that is most representative of Antalya, it's tahini piyaz, a bean salad with tahini, uh, sesame sauce on top, and it's often accompanied by kofte, which is little fried meatballs. So I've come to a place called Pia Si Sami. Uh, it's serving and specializing in the piyaz and kofte. And this restaurant, once again, very old school. The decor in here is really cool. All these. Uh, old Turkish things in here, a really nice atmosphere, and ordered up some kofte to have with a piyaz salad. Here it is, Antalya's famous tahini piyaz salad. So it starts with some beans, and then he slices up a boiled egg on top of that, and then puts some tomatoes, and then absolutely drenches it in tahini, sesame paste. And then on top of that, some olive oil, some lemon juice, and some onions, and then a little bit of parsley on top. It's a beautiful looking salad, and then uh, uh, serve with a side of some pickles, lemon, and chilies. Here are the kofte. This is not an Antalyan dish particularly, but uh, you can find it all across Turkey. It's just commonly eaten with the pia salad. So little meatballs, uh, a little bit of, looks like cumin on top, parsley served on some bread, some grilled uh, peppers on the side, some tomatoes and onions. And then this is kind of cool. He gave me two complete onions with the skin still on that have been grilled to eat along with it. But I gotta go for the piyaz, the salad, famous salad. You can see the beans underneath there. And then all of those toppings. Give it a little bit of a mix. Try to get a little bit of everything. Let's try that. Mm. Wow, that is an absolutely lovely salad. It's so light and fresh tasting and the beans are served warm, almost hot. So it's not like a cold salad. You get the crunch from the fresh onions, a little bit of sourness from the lemon, but really the dominant flavor is that nutty aroma from the tahini, that sesame paste on top. Oh my, that is much better than I actually thought it was gonna be. That is really, really addicting. Mm. It tastes so fresh and then contrast it with a little bit of nutty sweetness from the tahini. Okay, let's chase that salad with a little bit of kofte. Put some lemon juice, grab one of these guys. Some parsley. Mm. Mm. Nice flavor of cumin on there. Really, really juicy on the inside. And yes, it does accompany this salad really good because this is such a fresh, light salad. And then you get that kind of oily, juicy meat with it. It's such a unique flavor. Let me try to open up this uh, onion if I can here. Oh yeah. Oh, thank you, thank you. This will help a lot. <laughs> there we go. Grilled full onion. The skin on. Oh yeah, it's like super juicy on the inside. Try to grab a little slice and then have that with my cough day. That was delicious, and I'm loving this restaurant. It's such a homey feel. It literally feels like I just walked into someone's home and he offered me a dessert. This is a classic dessert called uh, Kabak Tatli. It's a pumpkin that's been cooked down with sugar syrup and then covered in tahini once again. It looks like it might be a different type of tahini because it looks a little bit different color and then covered with walnuts. And uh, look at how soft it is. Oh, wow. Let me give this a bite. That looks beautiful. Look at that pumpkin. That is delicious.
it reminds me of pumpkin pie and really just brings back memories of like Christmas to me because the flavor of the pumpkin with a little bit of cinnamon in there, I believe, it's definitely a different tahini. It's much sweeter. And the texture of the pumpkin, you can see right here. Look, my spoon just falls through it. I don't even need a push. It's almost like a pudding. The texture of that pumpkin, so creamy, yum. That's amazing. So that was Piaz si Sammy. Really delicious Piaz with tahini and their dessert was amazing too. The coffee, everything. It's a perfect combination. So I'm definitely gonna have to digest a little bit, take a little walk around the old city of Antalya now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. I've come to this little lookout point that overlooks the old harbor of Antalya. It was built in the second century by the Romans. It's still a functioning harbor, but now it's really touristic. And I'm gonna take a little walk through the back lanes of uh, Antalya's old city now. So Antalya certainly is a tourist hotspot, especially in the summertime because in the south here there's a lot of nice beaches. So the old city is a little bit touristy, but the benefit of that is that it's really well kept and clean and also it's really big, really, really big. There's a lot of streets to explore. You're not going to get the same authentic vibe like you might get in uh, Gaziantep or something, but still really beautiful, very picturesque. One thing that's really cool about Antalya is it's a really big city, but there's beautiful beaches directly inside the city with incredible water. And let me tell you, after walking around that old town, I really wish I brought my swimming trunks because I would jump in there in a second. There are tons of beautiful vantage points to get these incredible views over the city here in Antalya. I've come up to Hedrick's Castle. I don't know anything about it. It's old. It's too damn hot to be sightseeing anymore. So I'm going to eat. I just popped into a local favorite called Sitir Balik. They're selling different types of seafood sandwiches. So they have all kinds of different uh, seafoods. You can get sea bass, uh, shrimp, um, calamari, but I ordered sea bream and it's just like a quick snack. They call it Balik Ekmek, so fish bread, fish sandwich. The sandwich comes completely bare just with the fish and the bread. So there's like a whole station over here for uh, topping. So I'm gonna fill mine up right now. Spicy. Pepper pickles. Maybe a little bit of rocket. Onions, of course. Generously. And I think I'll just grab a lemon and maybe a little bit of this red cabbage. There we go. This restaurant's just sprawling out onto the sidewalk, street food style, for a little squeeze. Some lemon. Oh yeah, that's gonna be good. Nice crispy sea bream. Mm. Mm. All those fresh veggies really make it. And I love those peppers in there. They're spicy and sour from being pickled. I couldn't really uh, taste the fish, so let me go in for one more bite, see if I can get some fish.
Got a nice bite of the fish there. Super crispy, still, and very fresh tasting. I love the style where you can just dress it yourself. It's like uh, Subway sandwiches, but do it yourself. Add as much toppings as you want. I didn't really expect much, to be honest, because when they serve it to you, it just looks like nothing fried fish in bread. But with all those toppings and that really soft bread and crunchy fish on the inside, that's super satisfying. A really good on-the-go snack. Definitely recommend this place. All the information for the places I'll visit today are down in the description box. Uh, if you want a quick, cheap sandwich to fill you up with some fresh seafood, definitely recommend. Next up, I'm going to this 24-7 soup shop. So they specialize in Turkish soups, which are amazing. And uh, there's one particularly unique soup that I'm gonna try at this place called Pasha Si Semsi. Let's go try it. Oh, the beef. Okay, all the tripe. Oh, okay. Good. This restaurant also serves uh, kofte and different kebabs, but they specialize in the soups. So you can see their soup menu here is extensive and they've got all kinds of unique uh, ingredients in the soup. So they've got kele pacha, which is the one I've come to try today, which is the head meat, so sheep head. They've also got uh, trotters, uh, tripe, and then uh, lentil soup is very popular too. And then typical ones, chicken soup and uh, all kinds of different soups. There's so many, he was just showing me them all, but I'm gonna try the famous kelly pacha, which is the uh, sheep head pacha. It's kind of like a soup, a thick soup. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so this is hot butter that they're pouring on top of the soup. Whoa, that smells incredible. Nothing healthy about it. Thank you, Kelly Pacha. So he just poured the hot butter on top of it. You can see in here, we've got cream. There's this thick, thick cream. And then all of that head meat, that sheep head. And look at that burnt butter on top. That smells so good. Wow, the soup looks incredible. And this is particularly popular here in Antalya. Besides the Kelly Pacha, I ordered the lentil with chicken. So there's like shredded chicken in there and then that burnt brown butter all over top that they just poured on. And I didn't order this, so I'm not exactly sure what it is, but it looks like some kind of panini, um, maybe with cheese inside. But I'm gonna try the Kelly Pacha, the reason I'm here. This beautiful, thick, look at that, head meat soup. I thought there might be a little bit of a gamey flavor from the head meat, but it just basically tastes exactly like any other cut of meat. Super, super tender and really thick, creamy soup. And it's not salty, so I think I'm gonna wanna season it, but uh, I can definitely taste that butter. It has a strong aroma of butter. Let me put a little bit of seasoning in here. So there's some interesting toppings on the table. This is a garlic water, which I will uh, generously apply. I'll go for two big scoops, maybe three. And then also some vinegar. It looks like maybe a special type of vinegar. I'm not exactly sure. Look at all that beautiful meat in there. Mm. Oh yeah, with that garlic, 10 times better. Wow, yeah, the vinegar cuts through some of that uh, greasiness from that butter. Oh wow, yum, that is so hearty, so good. I would love to eat this on a cold day. Unfortunately, it's really hot today. So now I wanna try this lentil with chicken and there's no cream in this one, but look at the thickness from all that lentil. I'm gonna try it as is first. Mm. Mm. That is beautiful. That has such a nice, refreshing, natural vegetable flavor from those lentils. And then 
really soft chicken in there. And again, it's not seasoned, so it's not salty. It's just very plain. But the natural flavor of those lentils are incredible. And I don't know what to do with this, but first thing I'm thinking is I'm gonna dip it in this soup here. Why not, right? I don't know if there's anything inside of that. It soaks up the soup pretty good though. Yep. There is big chunks of fat in this kale pacha. And I think I went a little bit overboard on the vinegar, but it still tastes really good. And this is a really famous dish here in Antalya. You can find it at all the specialty soup shops. All right guys, that's it for today's episode. I love this city, Antalya. It's absolutely beautiful. One of my favorite places in Turkey. And the food here is also incredible. So make sure if you haven't already subscribed, hit the bell icon so you're notified when I post my next video. I have a lot of videos coming from Turkey. Super pumped to be back here. And I'll see you guys on the next episode of Chopstick Travel. Bye.